Well, let's look at the Jazz++ MIDI sequencer. When you first start it up, you have a little uh, song ready to go. What you're looking at is the list of individual tracks. Those are the MIDI channel numbers showing off, showing up off to the left. These would be the um, program numbers associated with each. You can use the keyboard display to easily view the MIDI events. Long note coming up. Really a nice way to kind of study the details of MIDI files that you might find, say, at, um, on the web, for example. Now, this is a multi-track recorder, and even if you don't have your own synthesizer, it's possible to set it up so that you can use the MIDI AUX keyboard to generate some events. The input device that we need is a uh, MIDI yoke number one, and then we'll send the output of our sequencer directly to the sound card. I will then set up MIDI aux so that it's generating an output to MIDI yoke number one. And then I enable the computer's keyboard, and when it's kind of blinking red, that's how we know that it's active. The way this works is I need to start recording in Jazz++, and then I need to bounce back to um, what I'm doing now is enabling the the, uh, the metronome. All right, now we're ready to record on that track. So with metronome in action, I can come back here and type some some keys. So again, this is directly on my computer's keyboard that I'm uh, doing right now. I'm not using a synthesizer or any other piece of equipment. and push the record button again to stop. When you see the little marks in there, that tells you that it found, or that, that it has recorded MIDI events. Now you can adjust the uh, program number. I'll change it to the Rhodes Piano, and I'll call this E-Piano. like a Rhodes to me. One of the greatest electric keyboards ever made. Alright, let's try laying down a second track. And I'll do this as a trombone. I'll call it track low brass. And I'm going to put all the events on channel 2. Make sure you have this one enabled. This says force the channel number onto all events on track. So even if MIDI aux is generating it on, say, channel 1, this will map it to channel 2. We have to use distinct channels for distinct instrument sounds. Now if you listen carefully, it's not going to sound a whole lot like a trombone as we use MIDI aux. a lot like the Rhodes piano so far. But not to worry. What's happening is those are being generated on channel 1, which is associated with electric piano. But when it's recorded, they actually get converted to channel 2. song. Okay, but definitely it sounded like a trombone instrument. Now if you're looking carefully underneath, it says set the channel to 10 to make a drum track. Again, we'll force all the numbers to channel 10. Call this the drum set. And uh, not all 128 note numbers are actually available for the drum set, so if you kind of keep your note number in the middle, you'll, you'll be bound to land on something. Again, it's kind of sounding like electric piano because they're being generated on channel one.
Well, let's try listening to the whole thing now that we got some percussion laid down. Again, if you kind of know which notes to press, you can actually get the program, or you can actually get the percussion instrument that you want. Well, let's look at the piano window here for a moment. Oh, let me mention that if you've done a lot of work, you can do the save as. I, I'm not going to save this file, but of course you want to save your work as you go along. Notice how the piano roll is showing up with um, uh, all of the drum-related uh, interpretations for the note number. If I put it up here, now we're looking at the piano. I'm trying to act, oops, actually trying to look at all of the events at the same time. Which is uh, showing events from all tracks, so I guess we're already doing it. Maybe I just need to make my window a little bit bigger. Well, we're at the end of the song now, so that's why we have all the blank area. Oh, I guess we need to sort of reduce the size of that window a bit so that we, we can get back to the original. So let's try scrolling back in time. See, we're at measure 14 right now. There they are. Here's another thing you can try. This perhaps is a little bit soft for you right now, but essentially you can scroll your cursor around on the notes until you find the one that you like. And then you can uh, essentially manually add note events. You can change their length and so on. So in principle, it'd be possible to create your own composition. Um, perhaps it'd take you a little bit longer this way than, than actually using somebody who knows how to play a keyboard. But technically it is possible to create a composition using the keyboard display. Let's try to listen for those new events. Hopefully when you try out Jazz++ plus plus yourself, you can make something that sounds even more interesting than that. The last thing I might point out is sometimes it's kind of fun to record at a fairly slow pace, especially if you're a keyboardist and you've got a keyboard hooked up to this. You record it slowly, and then you can crank up the metronome speed to hear it more quickly. Well, have fun. This is kind of a neat sequencer to play with.